I've always been a private person. I was never someone who liked to post on Facebook or who liked to share vulnerable or personal details about my life, especially with strangers. And that became all the more true when I got diagnosed with cancer. Cancer was not something that made me want to share. It was something that made me want to hide. But in those first few months, I felt incredibly isolated. And that's when I started looking for someone in the media that I'd be able to relate to. I wanted to hear about the things that I was dealing with. Loss of my hair, loss of independence, fear of the future. Um, the very real possibility that I might not survive my disease. People don't talk about the elephant in the room. When I didn't find that voice, I started writing first in my journals and later in a WordPress blog, um, and then eventually in my New York Times column, Life Interrupted. Just days after my diagnosis, I was shocked to read that the chemotherapy I was scheduled to undergo in less than a week was going to make me infertile. The idea that this wasn't something that had been brought up with me shocked me, uh, and it made me really angry. So one of the first columns that I ever wrote was about that fertility process. I was shocked by the response that I got. Something like 400 or 500 emails from other patients who were my age, who were also inpatient in the hospital in isolation. Sharing, I don't think, is for everyone, but it's a way to reach out to other people. It's a way to connect to others who have gone through these experiences. Don't get me wrong, cancer is terrifying, uh, and I still feel scared on most days. But I think that was the first time that I realized I wasn't completely alone. 